Following on from the previous two videos, we are now going to work out the time it takes for the particle to travel from A to, uh, to the lowest point B. So, uh, so we are going to make use of, of uh, potential energy and kinetic energy. Here the potential energy here it has a height of 2. So by the time it gets to the lowest point, all the potential energy would have been lost because the height would be 0. So, so all the potential energy will, will have been lost. It will get transferred to, um, to, uh, to, to the kinetic energy. So, for, so we can make use of this relationship. So we can work out velocity. Well, velocity will be given by, by this. Now cast your mind back to our section on projectiles. If, uh, if, if, you, if you are under constant acceleration, your acceleration time graph will look like this. And then your, your velocity time graph will look like this. And then your displacement time graph will look something like this. The point is that when you differentiate the displacement, it will give you velocity. If you differentiate your velocity, velocity time graph, it will give you acceleration. So, so, so if you, if you look at the gradient of your displacement time graph, uh, the, well, the gradient is really, the derivative is really ds by dt. Well, ds by dt really represents the velocity. So re remember, if you have your displacement time graph, if you differentiate it, it will give you, uh, it will give you velocity. Well, velocity is really ds by dt. So velocity is really ds by dt. So this velocity here is really ds by dt. Ds by dt. So, so you can make this statement here. ds by dt equals this. Now times both sides by, by dt. That will then give you this. That will then give you this. So when, when, you, when you read this, what it's saying is that a small change in time, combine it, combine it, with, uh, combine it with this, whatever this is, it will represent a small change in the actual path. So, uh, so if you have something like this, uh, let's say this is your graph here. Um, so a small change in time, let's say over, over 0.3 seconds, something, something like that. Uh, a small change in time, combine it with whatever this thing is, then it will result in a small change in, uh, in the actual path. So when, when you come to, um, when you come to read this, a small change in time, Combine it with this, and it will represent a, a small change in the actual path. Okay, so so now uh, now divide both sides by by this thing here. That will then give you this. So now so so dt equals this thing here. We we, we need we need to somehow resolve this ds. So hang on. So re, so so now we are currently here. We need to somehow resolve this ds. So so we've done this before. So this is a reminder. You should already know this. So, uh, so let's say you've got a, a, a graph here. Um, a, the, the, the actual, well, we can use Pythagoras here. The, the actual path, the, the distance of the actual path, well, we can use Pythagoras here. This is dx here, dy here, and then it's given by this relationship. Um, divide everything by the, uh, dx squared. Well, we've seen this before. Track back to one of the early videos, and it would be, uh, divide both side, divide everything by by this thing here by uh, the dx by dx squared. That would then give you this, and then um, and then you can rewrite this as this, and then square root everything. That would then give you this. We've seen this before. So so ds equals this thing here. We've seen this before. So track back to one of the early videos if you don't understand this. So when you come to read this, what it's saying is that a small change in, in the x direction, combine it with this thing, and it will res result in a, in, in this small change in the actual path. So what is, what this is saying, and what this is saying is, a small change in dx, so how, so what this is saying is that, a small change in dx, so this is your dx here, a small change in, in dx, so a small change in dx, combine it with this thing here, Combining with that thing here will result in a small change in the actual path. So this is your ds. So you start out with your, your small change in dx, combine it with whatever that thing was, and then it, it will result in the, the, the small change in the actual path. So, so, so when you see this, sorry, hang on. So when you see this, when you see this here, the way you should read it is that a small change in x in the x direction, Combine it with this thing 
will result in in a small change in the actual path a small change in the actual path so this bit here is really your ds okay so so earlier we were here earlier we were here now ds equals this thing here so we can put this in into here so now now we can work with a small change in in the x direction so so if you have a graph looking something like this you know if you have a graph looking something like this um a small change in in uh in dx here a small change in dx we 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 by looking at this we will we we can obtain a small change in the actual path and then and then from well we, ds equals this thing here we can put this into the uh, into the ds here so that will then take us to here so now uh now uh move this out here and then you've got this thing here so root uh root b well this here is the same as root b over a blah 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 this thing here will then become will then become this so what it, what this is saying now is that when you come to read this what this so d so so we are now at this stage here where dt equals this thing so when you come to read this um a small change in in the x direction so a small change in the x direction so this is your dx here combine it with whatever this thing may be and it will so so combine it with this thing what well, well uh, combine it with that thing uh so along the way combine it with that thing here along the way you're going to get this ds uh, in, buried in there somewhere well you start with your small change in dx so small change in the x direction combine it with this thing so along the way you're going to get this buried in there somewhere it will result in a small change in time so let's say so so hang on, let me start again so when you come to read this uh you should read it as a small change in in um, a small change in in the x direction you know, so somewhere in the, somewhere in there will be buried the ds somewhere in here there's a ds buried in there somewhere so so when you come to read this a small change in dx a small change in dx uh would result in a small change in time let's say let's say 3 seconds okay so so now the next the next one as another small change in dx so another small change in dx would result somewhere in there would be the ds in there will result in let's say a small change in in time let's say two seconds this time um and then when you come to read this another small change in dx another small change in dx here would result in let's say this time it takes five seconds um would result in, in a small change in dt so if you want to know the total time, you would have to sum up all the time here. You would have to sum up, you would have to sum up all, all the time from, well, you're doing it, well, you, you're moving along, dx here, dx here, dx here, dx here. So you're, you're really, you want to sum up everything from, from, from zero here all the way to, to wherever this x may be. And then that would then give you your, your total time. Well, I will continue the next video, okay?